Good evening ladies and gentlemen. It's another fine day here in Kisumu and you can tell that the weather is actually terrific. I know most of you guys have been waiting eagerly for the analysis of President Uru Kenyatta's meeting in Mombasa with Raila Molo Odinga and the One Kenya Alliance Movement. That is Raila Odinga, Kalonzo Musyoka, Musadi Amdavadi, Gideon Moy, and Moses Wetangula. I can confirm that the president met with that team. But I don't have the final details of what was really discussed in that meeting. Once I get all those details, I'm going to do a proper analysis. But I know for sure that BBI is probably one of the issues which were discussed there. The other thing I'm sure about is 2022 politics. Probably the division within the, the former NASA principles or within this same same team. By tomorrow morning, I think the analysis will be up. For now, I want us to analyze something which just came up. Raila Molo Dinga, through his party, the ODM party, finally decided to kick Amazon Kingi out of ODM leadership in Kilifi. Amazon Kingi has been at the forefront of pushing for the formation of a coast-based political party. For those who might not know, apart from being the governor of Kilifi, Amazon Kingi, Kingi was also serving as the ODM chairperson for Kilifi County. And today, the ODM party decided to remove him. And he's been replaced by one of the most local, loyal supporters of Raila Molodinga from that region, Teddy Mwambire. Teddy Mwambire and Raila Molodinga began politics, their relationship long time ago. Teddy served as a, an MCA, I think a councillor, then MCA, then in the last election, he was elected as a member of parliament. And by the way, this is one guy that you can't really tell whether he's a member of parliament or not if you meet him in the streets of Nairobi or even in the streets of Kisumu. You can't tell that he's a member of parliament. But he's one of those loyal supporters of Raila Amolodinga from the coastal region. Of course, even Amazon Kingi was one of the most loyal supporters of Raila Amolodinga. And just like I keep on asking what really transpired, between the Deputy President William Ruto and President Ruth Kenyatta, I've also been asking myself what really transpired between Amazon Kingi and Raila Amolodinga. Because if you look at the history of Raila Amolodinga and Kingi, Raila Amolodinga has played a key role around Amazon Kingi's politics. And probably that explains why just yesterday Amazon Kingi said for him he's going to chart his political path, but he's not going to talk negatively about Raila Amolodinga. Because in 2000, was it 2007, that's when he was first elected as a member of parliament for Magarini. Raila Odinga decided to pick him as a young boy and made him a full cabinet minister. In 2000, and, uh, that was 2007, in 2013, Raila Odinga also prevailed upon Kingi to contest for the Kilifi gubernatorial seat. It was only not Kingi. Raila Odinga prevailed upon Kingi, Nanok, Nyongo, Orengo, Kajuang, and I think there's another guy from Kuala to co go and contest for the gubernatorial seat. Apart from Kingi and uh, Nanok, most of these other guys from Nyanza, for example, Nyongo, Orengo, and Kajuang, did not see the influence of governors, so they decided to go for the Senate. So Kingi emerged that way until even the last election when he played a key role for Raila Moludinga's victory in Kilifi. But as things stand today, Amazon Kingi is off. But the question which most Kenyans are asking is why has he been kicked out of the ODM party? I want you to listen to my critical analysis. But before you do that, if you're watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two Click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And for the subscribers, I want to continue to thank you guys for your continued support. Now, let us get back to the main issue. Let me just, it's, this is just coffee. 
<clears throat> Let us get back to the main issue. Why do you think Raila Molodinga finally decided to kick Amazon King out of ODM party? Or out of the management of ODM party in Kilifi? In my view, I have five theories. The first reason why this has been done is that Raila Odinga and the ODM party are trying to preempt Amazon King's move to bolt out of ODM party to his own political party and engineer probably mass exodus. Amazon King is forming his own political party. He has actually identified a political party. In ODM, he's fighting with Joho for the control of the coastal region. Joho is already ahead of him. He's planning to bolt out. So the thing you do is you, before he bolts out, remove him. So that even if King were to call for a press conference tomorrow, that press conference will only call it as Amazon Kingi, the governor of Kilifi, and not as Amazon Kingi, the ODM party chairperson of Kilifi. Because if you were to, 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 to exit with that title, it means he will call a press conference as the Kilifi ODM chairperson, probably with the officials of the party, and then move. That would be dangerous. That would be dangerous for the party called ODM. So in their own wisdom, they decided, okay, you want to leave? We are not going to give you that privilege. So we are preempting your move. You want to leave? Before you leave, we kick you. And that marks the difference between the way Raila Odinga has been able to manage ODM and the way Ruto has, I mean, the way President Ruto Nyata has been able to manage his party. Take, for example, in Turkana. Nanok made it very clear that he was exiting the ODM party. Raila Odinga didn't give him the privilege of exiting. What they did, they just appointed someone as the chairperson of that county and also appointed someone as the vice chairperson of the party. So when Nanok was now leaving, he was just Nanok, an ODM member, and not as an official. So they wanted to preempt Amazon King's next move. Number two, I think Raila Odinga is also trying to do something revamp the party. Basically, he's trying to avoid a situation where Amazon King is, trying, is going to, to sabotage the party internally. Kilifi, within ODM circles, is referred to as the OD, home to ODM number one. Then you come to Kisumu. Then I think number three is normally Mombasa, according to ODM ranking. As long as King was the governor, and as long as he's still the chairperson of ODM party, and he's still pursuing his own interest, there was no way he was going to revamp the party. He would only sabotage the party. So to prevent internal sabotage, let him go. Appoint someone. Then this guy will now take charge of the affairs of the party at the county, and then they can now decide to remove those who are allied to Kingi. Then bring on board some other individuals. So I'm looking at it from that perspective. I don't know what you think, but I think... Red Odinga and his party are trying to avert any possible sabotage from within and also to try and revamp the party. Because if, if, they didn't, if they don't remove him, or if they didn't remove him, he would still be the chairperson. He would still have the leeway to meet each official. They can even meet and convert the ODM office into his own political party. Number three, why he has been kicked out, in my view, is the Kilifi gubernatorial seat in 2022. Kingi's term is coming to an end. And this is a big headache, not only to Kingi, but even the second term governors. I'm seeing for Joho, he's decided that in Mombasa he's not going to interfere. Or maybe he has his candidate, but not supporting openly. Amazon Kingi is keen on determining who is going to be the next governor for Kilifi. He wants his brother, who is the current member of parliament for Magarini, Michael Kingi. To be the next governor. Raila Molodinga is rooting, based on my own understanding, for uh, this gentleman called Gideon Mungaro. The deputy governor is also pushing for his own bid, which means the interests of Raila Molodinga and the interests of Kingi when it comes to Kilifi gubernatorial seats are totally different. Kingi is trying to do everything possible to stop Gideon Mungaro from becoming the next governor. But Gideon Mungaro has the support of the president. He has the support of Raila Molodinga. He has the, at least on the ground, he's also 
present there. He's not a newcomer. Yes, this is a guy who has served as the mayor for uh, for uh, Malindi. He's also served as uh, the member of parliament there. Kingi wants his brother. So how are these going to meet? Can Raila Odinga decide, okay, I'm going to retain you, Kingi, but support, I mean, I'm going to retain you, Kingi, but support your brother? Or is he going to accept the fact that Gideon Mungaro is now coming back and is keen on recapturing the seat? So I think the Kilifi gubernatorial seat is also one of the reasons. Because for them to win that seat, it means the guy they are going to push will now be given the, ch the chance to take charge of the operations of the ODM party in that county. So Mungaro, in my view, is likely to start taking charge through the from the background because he's still a civil servant. He's likely to take charge of ODM party from the background in Kilifi from Kingi. The fourth reason why this has happened, in my view, is the fact that Kingi has been sending mixed signals. He wants to form his own party. He wants to retain the ODM chairmanship. He wants to be ODM member. He wants to still be with Ruto. Kingi wants to be part of President Ruto Kenyatta schemes. You know, so he's been sending mixed signals. But how many days do we have remaining until the next general election? 364 days today. Raila Odinga cannot keep on, in my view, waiting for Kingi to decide where he wants to. Because things can go like this, then at the end of the day, Kingi will move to Ruto. What will happen then to Raila Odinga if he's not prepared? So he must kick him, kick him out, get people who can try, and if he's so powerful and influential, which probably he is, in Kilifi, then that new guy will be able to manage him. So I think the, the reason is Kingi is sending mixed signals. And these mixed signals is not really working for Raila Molo Dinga's political interest. Raila Dinga wants to move, and he can only move with the Kingi or without Kingi. And number five, I think, is focus on 2022. I think Raila Dinga is trying to come up with a Pentagon kind of thing expanded. So Joho is playing a, a part. I'm seeing Mungaro likely to play a part somewhere there. So he wants to focus on his 2022 presidential bid. Focusing on 2022 presidential bid would mean that he's not going to go back to start pleading with the Kingi that, oh, Kingi, remain in the party, don't go, you know. Those will be draining his energy. So I think he has decided that for those who are going to support me, they are with me. For those who are not going to support me, they are not with me. So he's deciding, okay, for the first step, let me remove you from the ODM party leadership. The first step. So that he can focus. So that tomorrow, when Raila Odinga will be going to coastal region and in Kilifi, he, Kingi will not be receiving him as the ODM chairperson. Of course, he can receive him as the governor. The last time Raila Odinga was in Kilifi, Kingi was nowhere. And Kenyans were really asking where Kingi went to. He avoided a situation where he was going to meet with Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga was actually hosted by Gideon Mungaro. So I think Raila Odinga is keen on focusing his attention in 2022. And lastly, I also think that this is a victory for Joho. Raila Odinga wanted to send a message to the coastal region that Joho being the ODM deputy, deputy party leader is now going to be the main guy from the coastal region. Because the contest at the coast has always been between Raila, I mean, between Joho, Kingi, and the Kwale governor, Salim Vuria. And the fact that Kingi has now been kicked out of ODM, so that leaves Joho and Mvuria. Joho and Mvuria, both of them are serving their second term. And because you don't have regional governorship, I mean, where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? So I'm seeing a situation where Joho is positioning himself to sit at the national table. And Kingi, being the, the guy I know, is likely to shift from Raila Odinga's camp to William Ruto's camp. And in my view, that's going to be a huge blow for Raila Amundo Odinga, should he join William Ruto's camp. But of course, he can decide that he's going to pursue the coast-based political party, then use that particular vehicle for his post-2022 politics. Like if he can win, let's say, one, two, three, four seats from here, MCS there, then even beyond two, 2022, he will be a party leader, which means that will open doors for him to negotiate. I don't know what you think. 
But let me tell you one thing, that Kingi is one of the politicians, personally, I really love. When Kingi speaks, you love how he speaks. His messages are always on point whenever he takes to the podium. He's one guy I always listen to most of his speeches, whether it's about Kilifi things, whether it's about national politics. Kingi is one guy I normally listen so much to him. And even some of his, his people down there are actually very close friends of mine. And we've done one or two with them. People like Mulei uh, Yule <laughs> Mse, several of them. Yeah, and even um, Nyundo, the ODM youth leader, I know is very close to Kingi. It's my guy. You know, those those guys. And I know the 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 kind of input Kingi put in ODM. But I'll be waiting to see whether this team will remain with Raylo Dinga or whether they'll go with Kingi. I'll be interested in knowing that. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day.